Hey beautiful people, it's Mizgo here. Now did you know Airbnb is worth over $90 billion since their initial public offering back in December 2020? Now I love Airbnb's experience and I have booked over 12 stays on their platform, but two weeks ago when I landed on their platform to do a little browsing, I wasn't too happy with some of the updates that they've made. How would I improve some of the UX on Airbnb? Let's dive in. All right, so two weeks ago, we were finally seeing a little bit of relief in Sydney, Australia due to the lockdowns. And I was jumping onto Airbnb just to take a look at some of the getaway places that my partner, Nori, and myself could potentially go to. But when I landed on their website, I felt like I was genuinely confused. Like I mentioned before, I've booked over 12 stays on Airbnb. So I'm very familiar with their experience. But when I landed on this website, it was quite confusing because as you can see here, like most of my entire real estate was focusing on this little button that said, not sure where to go to, perfect, I'm flexible, right? My initial response and thought was that, no, I do know where I'm going. Like it's around like the local areas around Sydney. So I went ahead and clicked on the location tab, but I didn't realize my cursor was actually detected inside this input. And this large uh, drop down, which is a replica of this button over here, like took over the entire interface and I was very confused. I thought I had to click on this button. So I went ahead, clicked on unflexible and I got taken to this uh, website, uh, this page over here. Now I can see and I could obviously think that Airbnb is trying to stimulate some ideas for people who are coming out from lockdowns and like they're trying to uh, encourage people to explore new places. So I took a look on this website, uh, this page and yes, the photos are beautiful, but if you take a look at the kilometers away, they're very far away from me. So 96 kilometers away, 650 kilometers away. That's gonna take me days to get there if I was walking, 117 kilometers away. So when I took a look at this, my initial reaction was that these places, no matter how beautiful, are very far away. I don't wanna to commit to that. So I went ahead and went back to Airbnb. I clicked on this input again and then realized, okay, I can type in Brisbane or wherever I wanted to explore or go to. I popped in a few dates and I put in my um, the guess and then I hit search. And then what I realized was this was the search result which hasn't really changed. Um, but there was a message here which doesn't show up anymore because Sydney is back in lockdown um, and this message has actually changed. So it was actually saying 40, um, book now because 43% of all the accommodation in Brisbane has been booked out already, right? So there was a little bit of urgency that they were trying to push. But I actually didn't even see that message um, until a couple of minutes later, right? So with this in mind, I felt like there was a lot of small improvements that we can make in this design and in this experience to really help motivate the user. Because as a UX designer, that's our job. We need to motivate users to take action, right? So I came up with some ideas and I wanna walk you through step-by-step step on the rationale and the process behind this, okay? So let's get right into it. All right, so here we have the uh, the homepage of Airbnb. Now, if you didn't realize, I went ahead and did some major uh, structural changes to their homepage by really just reducing the height of that banner. I wanted to bring more information up to the top because filling up the entire screen with this illustration doesn't add any value to me as a customer, right? You had a, Airbnb had a button to encourage me to um, explore, but you've also got uh, items down here, which is encouraging exploration as well. So instead of trying to double down on that, why not just bring, um, reduce the fold, right? And increase the exposure to some of the elements down below. That is uh, two birds, one stone, right? You're, you're solving the two issues with just the same design, but you're just making better use of the real estate. Now, I know that you guys might be thinking, okay, well, Airbnb had the smartest people around the world. They're a massive company, but let's not forget Airbnb also let go, I think a quarter of their entire workforce due to the pandemic as well. And at the same time, just because a large organization is reputable for uh, their service and their product does not mean that they're making the best decisions because each design and each feature goes through so many levels of politics and feedback that even though you had the great idea at the start, it still gets torn apart by the time it actually gets to execution because everyone wants to put their finger on the design, you know? Everyone wants to feel important. So if you remember the design previously, it was simply a search bar with a button in the middle. 
Now, what I like to do is I always like to frame what a page is about with effective micro copy. So instead of just assuming that people know what to click on, ask them and instruct them, guide them. Where are you heading next, right? Get them to think and then get them to and lead them to the action that you want them to do, right? Previously, Airbnb just had the search bar at the top. Now, here's an interesting fact as well. I went to uh, went onto Instagram and I asked my audience how many people have actually used Airbnb. Now, it's very like naive and very biased of us to just jump to conclusions and think that everyone has used Airbnb, right? Now, obviously, this this the data set that I was working with is not significant, but still, out of 150 people, half of them haven't used Airbnb before. So, it's very naive and very biased of us to just think that Airbnb can just do whatever they want because they've got a good brand name. Not everyone has used it, so I think Airbnb should always be putting their best foot forward and actually be strategic with their decisions. So, micro copy, where are you heading next? Guide the user down, right? So, if the user clicks on location and if they do go down, I'm flexible. Here, you can see that I made a slight tweak. Now, previously, they didn't have icons and they also didn't have ratings. The reason why I've done this is because previously it felt like there was just a lot of text, right? They also used um, kilometers as the term, which felt like there was a lot of words on the page. So I wanted to bring iconography and also some social proof to help the user make a better decision quicker and more effectively. So now when I take a look at this, I know that it's 96 kilometers away, but the carrot on the stick is that it is a highly rated place, right? Same, with, same over here. 4 out of 5, 32 reviews, 5 out of 5, 47 reviews. And even though that these places are far away, at least you are putting your best foot forward over to the customer and doing your best work and saying, hey, yes, it is far away, but people love this place, right? So these are the motivational cues and triggers that I will be implementing into here. Now, the iconography and the abbreviation of kilometers into K uh, KM just helps digest a lot of the content and it just allows the user to quickly grasp um, the idea, the concepts and the information really quickly by just scanning, right? Before there was just far too many words and there was no social proof. Now let's say we want to go in and actually search. So let's say I'm going to Sydney, New South Wales, 11th of July, 14th of July and two guests and I hit search. Then if you didn't notice, and I'm sure you did, you would have your eye would have been drawn to the actual animation for this bar now previously it was static information that you probably didn't even notice so as this page loads i want to make sure that if there is urgency right we want to make sure that the visuals the animations the transitions also communicate the urgency as well so when you landed on the page and you saw that fade up it catches your eye and it's the first thing that you see right so we want to guide the user to reading the things that we want them to read in a in a chronological order, right? We don't want people to just go around browsing and then like lucky or by accident stumble across this little notification saying, hey, book soon. We want them to see it right away. Book soon, 43% of the places in Brisbane for your dates are already booked on Airbnb. That frames the experience. It frames the context on this page. So when I'm actually browsing through, I, there is a seed that's planted in the, in my mind, so it motivates me to take action as well. Now, if I'm actually browsing, a nice little a trigger would also be to fade in a little uh, toaster down here, which obviously could I could increase the visual hierarchy on this, but the idea is to just give you an understanding of some of the ideas that were running through my mind and let them know that there was 32 people that are also currently browsing on Melbourne uh, accommodation and at Melbourne stays as well on this platform. So really, there was a couple of little small uh, tricks and tips that I would implement into Airbnb's user experience. Now, this whole thinking, right, is called growth design. So if you are interested in learning more about like these small little tips and tricks and tactics that you can implement right away into your own design decisions, these are five recommendations that I would put forward to you to read in your own time to really help you stimulate and grow as a growth designer, okay? So Hooked is a great book by Ner Ayal, which I have highly recommended in a number of videos. It teaches you how to build habit-forming products. It was one of the first design books that I have ever read and hands down my favorite to this date. OKDork.com is Noah Kagan's very own blog. So Noah Kagan was, I believe, 
I think the, one of the first 20 employees at Facebook. He was uh, driving a uh, marketing at that platform, and then he also now runs a eight-figure marketing sort of uh, platform and marketplace for tech products. Now, he's a great guy, extremely inspirational, also very uh, savvy in marketing as well. So when you read more about how marketers think, it gives you more ideas about how to motivate customer behavior, how to motivate customers to make more, uh, make, uh, take action, and it just really helps you understand the, psycholog- the psychology behind some of the digital uh, designs and interfaces that we create. Now, Neil Patel, also a great and guru in SEO and marketing. So feel free to check out neilpatel.com. He's got some really good insights and case studies on his actual website that you can read through to learn more about how to motivate users to take action. Now, growth.design is also a stellar repository of case studies that are all about growth, right? How design can help drive growth within an organization and also within a product. These case studies are so well designed that I hands down give them a 10 out of 10 for, so make sure to check them out. Then, last but not least, you can always check out my newsletter. So you can simply subscribe to my newsletter and every single month I release some sort of like deeper insights into my workflow, my process, my projects, but I also feature lots of different like tips and tricks that I personally have implemented in my work and also others have implemented in their work and I share it all with you guys all for free. So guys, if you enjoyed this video, make sure to leave a comment below, gently smash that like button and hopefully see you designing more growth driven designs. All right guys, I'll see you in the next video very, very soon.